Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Let's let's try and get this together this morning. Come on. I'm expecting. Let's begin as we mean to continue. I'm expecting. I'm looking for. And I'm hoping in him. Because for me there will be no more flapping. Because I was born to sow up. Oh, this is part five. Possibly the last part of this series. No more flapping. No more flapping. Amen. Why? Because we were born <laughs> born to sow up. Amen. Glory to God. So, as I've said previously, um, the inspiration for this series came from a scene I've witnessed on a, on a number of occasions in various places where a golden eagle is, is flying at a, a low altitude while it is being harassed by a, a crow or, or, or a group of crows, a strategy that is called mobbing. And, and rather than, than exercising its ability to take off to the heights and leave its tormentors behind as it is equipped to do, the eagle instead appears to be willing to tolerate and to put up with their harassing and intimidating tactics as it just flaps along down there at, at that low altitude. But, you know, to me, as I've said over and over again, this is a prophetic, very powerful, actually, prophetic picture of believers who, who are equipped, who are already equipped with all of God's supernatural power and ability, enabling them to deal with all of the harassments and, and intimidation of the enemy. And yet, rather than exercising their power and their authority that they've been given, they are more inclined to resort to flapping than doing what they were created to do, which is to soar. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, Amplified Bible says this, But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in Him, will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God, just like eagles rising toward the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. They will walk and not faint. Say, I'm expecting, I'm looking for, and I'm hoping in him. No more flapping. I was born to So Remember what Jesus said, only, only believe. John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and then of course the message translation puts it this way this is how much god loved the world he gave his son his one and only son and this is why so that no one need be destroyed but by believing in him anyone can have a whole and a lasting life say i believe say i'm expecting I'm looking for and I'm hoping in him. No more flapping, I was born to soar. Glory to God. You know, you've probably heard the, the saying, attitude is everything. Well, I want to I wanna show you today that your attitude will actually determine your altitude. Whether you're flying low, where you can be mobbed by crows, or whether you will soar high above where the crows can reach you. And of course, these crows... Of course, symbolize all of that stuff, all that stuff of life, whether it's demonic or whether it's just from <laughs> living in a fallen world. All of the stuff, the pressures of life. You know, our, our most common use of the word attitude is, is defined as a settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something, typically one that is reflected in a person's behavior. But did you know that altitude, or attitude, sorry, is also an aeronautical term? I think I've, I've taught on this previously, but attitude is also an aeronautical term. It's the orientation of an aircraft or a spacecraft relative to the direction of travel. So your attitude can either lift you up or pull you down. Your attitude can either lift you up or pull you down. You know, the four forces of flight are lift and weight and thrust and drag. And these forces make an object move up and down and faster or slower. So how much of each force there is will actually change how the object moves through the air. Isaac Newton formulated his laws of motion in the 17th century. But the word of God, of course, 
had it all sussed long before then. <laughs> Don't you love it when science proves what the Word of God said all along? Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand <laughs> of the throne of God. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I love the way that the message translation brings brings us Jesus' invitation in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. I think that's probably why I, why I just keep coming back to this. I just love to, to quote these verses from the message translation. Matthew uh, 11, 28 to 30. Are you tired? Are you worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, Jesus says. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Jesus invites us to what? To come and learn from him. Oh, hallelujah. We used to sing a chorus, learning to lean, learning to lean, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. We now I like to think of it more like I'm, I'm leaning to learn. <laughs> I'm leaning to learn. I'm leaning to learn from Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus always maintained an attitude that caused him to go high, to soar on the Holy Spirit, thermals of grace. Hallelujah. Remember the awesome revelation of Psalm 8, where it says, What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than Elohim, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. Remember what God said there at the very beginning, let us make man in our own image and likeness and let us give man dominion. Let him have dominion in the earth. Glory to God. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands, it says in verse 6. You have put all things under his feet. You know, God has not changed his mind about giving us dominion. Jesus demonstrated what that means and he showed us what dominion looks like. He went about doing good. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Acts 10, 38, with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He came to bring freedom and healing and deliverance to those who were suffering under the counterfeit of domination. You know, Jesus said, I give you authority, Luke 10, 19, to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. You know, he was saying, I'm here to remind you that you have dominion. I'm restoring that dominion and giving you the authority and the power to back it up. Oh, hallelujah. See, I'm expecting, <laughs> I'm looking for and I'm hoping in him no more flapping. I was born to soar. Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, when man sinned, when man rebelled against God and, and, and disobeyed God and sinned, and, and, and he, he fell from his spirit to his soul. And he lost his supernatural connection with heaven. It was like the plug got pulled. <laughs> he lost the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the power and the, and, and, the, and the nearness of God's presence and fellowship that made his dominion a pleasure. And he was naked. But you know what Jesus said? You will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will no longer be naked. Luke chapter 24, verse 49 from the Amplified. Listen carefully, Jesus says, I am sending the promise of my Father, the Holy Spirit. We spoke about this last week. The Holy Spirit upon you. But you are to remain in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from an eye. You will no longer be spiritually naked. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name. Of the Lord. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. And so he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. And God gave man dominion 
to do good and to heal and to do it all from that place of relationship and fellowship with our Heavenly Father. See, I'm expecting, (laughs) I'm looking for and I'm hoping in Him. No more flapping, I was born to soar. Remember what the Father spoke over Jesus at his baptism? You know when he he, he submitted himself to baptism with John the Baptist? John the Baptist wanted to fuss and, and argue about it and say, oh, no, 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 this is not right. This is, you should be baptizing me. And Jesus said, let it be this way right now because all righteousness needs to be fulfilled so that all righteousness might be fulfilled. And the Father spoke from heaven, said, this is my beloved Son and who I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit descended upon him. He wasn't just baptized in water. He was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Father said, you are my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus had submitted to John's baptism, which was a baptism of repentance. He was showing us the way back, the way back to the Father. See, God hasn't changed his mind about giving us dominion. It's our minds that have to change in order to take the dominion that we have been already given. Repentance the Greek word for repentance, met, metanoio, it, means, it comes from two words, meta, meaning after, and noio, to means to think. You know, it's a, de- a decision that results in a change of mind, which in turn will lead to a change of purpose and of action. Repentance is a change of attitude that results in a change of direction, a change of altitude. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I'm not talking about what Psychobabble calls a positive mental attitude here. This is not mind power. This is spirit power. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to 24. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind and their perverseness and the folly, vanity and emptiness of their souls and the futility of their minds having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned. <laughs> Lean in, tell, learn. You have not so learned. You said, come and learn from me. You have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. That you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. You know, the key to supernatural transformation is being renewed in the spirit of of our minds, having our minds restored to the influence and the leadership of the Holy Spirit via our born-again spirits. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Repentance is exchanging our thoughts for his thoughts. Paul said, I have the mind of Christ. He exhorts us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So that through repentance we exchange our thoughts for his thoughts and our ways for his ways our low thoughts for his high thoughts our low ways for his high ways remember we've said this over and over and over and over again over the years your thoughts will become your words your words will become your actions your actions your habits your habits will uh, become your character and your character will 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 determine your destiny (laughs) see i'm expecting i'm looking for and I'm hoping in him no more flapping I was born to soar. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, Jesus said, I have spoken these words so that you may have joy. Hallelujah. That you may have joy. The words that, that, that are the expression of the Father's thoughts because your thoughts become your words. And God says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. He says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And, and so the words that he speaks are the expression of his thoughts. And Jesus said, I've spoken these words to you so that you may have joy, fullness of joy. Amen. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures 
forevermore. Oh, hallelujah. Scripture says, do not be conformed, Romans 12, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, metamorphosized, changed from one type of person to a completely different order of creation, hallelujah, by the renewing of your mind. Just one slight adjustment in our attitude, I believe, can transform our lives. Just one thought, just one word. One simple but powerful tweak or correction of our understanding can change our attitude. And I want you to hear this because there's a key here. This is what I want to bring this one. There's a, a, a real powerful key here. Just that one simple but powerful tweak or correction of our understanding can change our attitude from I have to to I get to. And move us, I believe, from pressure to pleasure, from domination to dominion, from law <laughs> to grace. Remember I said this over and over and over again also, you know, that a lot of times we, we fail to, to access everything that God has made available, to walk in the fullness of everything that God has destined for us, because we do not make that full transition from the old covenant to the new covenant. We need to understand we've been moved from law to grace. And that one tweak of our attitude, I have to, to I get to, moves us from flapping to soaring. You see, dominion gives liberating commands, but domination makes controlling demands. Dominion gives liberating commands, but domination makes controlling demands. Dominion is a pleasure, but domination is a pressure. Dominion says, I get to. Domination says, oh, I have to. Dominion's about transforming. Domination is about conforming. Dominion removes all of the natural limitations, but domination reinforces natural limitations. I believe we can transform our lives, transform our witness and our testimony by simply changing our attitude from I have to to I get to. Do you ever think, maybe you thought it this morning, oh no, it's Sunday, I have to go to church. Oh. You know what that is? That's pressure. That's pressure. Instead, you wake up on Sunday morning and say, wow, it's Sunday, I get to go to church to meet together with the saints of God and the house of God. Hallelujah. Now that's pleasure. <laughs> Therein lieth the difference, folks. David said, I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. You know, even the preacher, he, he thinks, oh no, Sunday's coming. I, I, I have to prepare a message. That's pressure. <laughs> you know when he when he when he when he when he, when he begins to meditate and, and God's word and he says, Oh wow, Sunday's coming. I get to prepare a message. Fresh bread from heaven for the saints of God. Oh hallelujah. Blessed be the name. That's pleasure. <laughs> There's pleasure in that. Amen. Well, the worship leader, he, he, you know, he, if he thinks, Oh no, it's nearly Sunday and oh, I have to get some songs together, you know. That's pressure. <laughs> but when they say, oh wow, fantastic, Sunday's coming and I will get to lead the people of God in worship. That's pleasure. That's pleasure. Someone who undertakes any supporting role in the, in the church should never think, oh no, I have to do this. That's pressure. But when they say, oh yes, <laughs> I get to do this. That's pleasure. Even, I mean, come on, Jesus said, everywhere you go, you know, if people wake up Monday morning, they're like, oh no, it's Monday again, I have to go to work, that's pressure. Until you realise that, no, 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 I'm just going out into the harvest field. It's Monday, I get to go to work. Where? In the harvest field. I get to be an answer to the prayers of the saints. That God would send forth labourers. Here I go. I get to go. Hallelujah. That's pleasure. Amen. If we think I have to do more witnessing to others about Jesus, oh, that's pressure. 
But if we say, whoa, I get to be a witness to Jesus everywhere I go, that's pleasure. Amen. Remember, Jesus said, as you go, preach, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, thinking that you have to do these things, well, that will create pressure. But knowing that we get to do these things will always bring pleasure. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you haven't tried it yet, it's time to try it. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Anything that we do because we are... Let me, hear, let, me, let, me, let me just uh, say this here. Anything that we do because we are under pressure and from an attitude of I have to will always come from a spirit of domination. Will carry in and create an atmosphere where, where others will feel browbeaten and oppressed. Like, we're trying, you know, like the like the like, like the sheepdog, you know. <laughs> Jesus is the good shepherd, he leads, he said, Come, learn from me, follow me. Hallelujah. The sheepdog, no, he comes round his ankles and intimidates and tries to get the sheep to go where he wants them to go. When we live with the attitude of I get to, we take pleasure in every opportunity to testify of or to demonstrate God's goodness. We will exercise dominion. We will carry and we will create an atmosphere where others will feel uplifted and encouraged. We will create thermals on which others can soar on. I'll lift their, raise their faith. Hallelujah, that takes hold of and accesses everything that God has made so freely available to everybody. Oh, hallelujah. See, I'm expecting. I'm looking for, and I am hoping in Him. Hallelujah. Because I was born to soar, so there'll be no more flapping in me, because I was born to soar. You know, whenever we're driven by a a legalistic, I have to. We will be under pressure to perform. And that's why sometimes people burn out. <laughs> people give up and quit. But when we're motivated by the, by, 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 by the awesome realisation of I get to, everything becomes a pleasure. <laughs> and our strength is renewed, just like the eagles who soar so effortlessly on the thermals. Come on. See, I'm expecting. I'm looking for. And I'm hoping. And I have no more flapping. I was born to soar. Romans chapter 8 verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Listen to the tense. Has made me free from the law of sin and death. Just like the law of aerodynamics supersedes the law of gravity, so the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the law of I get to, supersedes the law of sin and death, which is the law of, of I have to. And the change in our attitude determines our altitude and allows us to soar and to lift others up so that they can taste and see that the Lord is good. So that they can experience the free favours of God that profusely abound, even to the point of extravagant excess. Come on, let's let's let's, let's hear Jesus' invitation to come and learn from Him. Do we want to be agents of transformation? Then let's take this opportunity to learn from Jesus, to exchange our, our, our high pressure attitude of I have to for the exciting pleasure of I get to and get ready to soar folks get ready to soar you will discover that your attitude will determine your altitude maybe you've been flying low maybe there's some areas of your life where you've just never been able to seem to get above where you are and, and all of that intimidation comes and, and you've learned just to tolerate it and put up with it and just a wee bit of flapping you, know, you think that helps a bit you know well you need to hear this this morning your attitude moving from I have to to I get to will determine your attitude and will cause you to rise up above the places where you have been putting up with that stuff. You'll begin to see more clearly. 
You'll get more done. Listen to this, folks. This is good news. You'll see more clearly. You'll get more done. And everything will be a pleasure as we learn the unforced rhythms of grace. See, I'm expecting, I'm looking for, and I am hoping in him. No more flapping. I was born to soar. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the unforced rhythms of grace. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we're leaning in close to learn, to learn from you the unforced rhythms of grace that we might do no more flapping, but we might begin to soar to the places that you designed and created us to soar, to take the places of dominion that you've given to us, Father. Oh, hallelujah. To exercise that dominion as a blessing to all in the earth, wherever we go, that we might be a blessing in Jesus' name, that the harvest that is already ripe, the harvest that is already ready for harvesting, might come in, Father, in Jesus' name, that you may be glorified in your church. In Jesus' name, amen. I've seen miracles my mind can't comprehend And there is beauty in what I can understand Jesus, it's you Jesus, it's you I believe you're the wonder-working God You're the wonder-working God All the me I've seen too good to not believe you're the wonder working God and you heal because you love all oh, the miracles we'll see you're too good to not believe 
I've seen cancer disappear I've seen men 